Well, Labour didn't have a great set of election results, to say the least. It was a disaster for them in the Hartlepool by-election and in many local councils, particularly in the north. Following that, the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, let it be known he was going to act fast, reshuffle and get to work on making the Labour Party electable again. Only trouble is, it took a lot longer than expected. He first sacked Angela Rayner, then there was a, a great hoo-ha in his party, and then he basically gave her a load of other jobs and ended up looking weak and indecisive. And you could say that all of that mess distracted from the second lot of results in Wales and some of the mayoral cities like London that were not bad for Labour at all. The left wing of the party are now demanding action, though. They say we shouldn't rule out a leadership challenge. The former shadow Chancellor John McDonnell has said they're going to take the fight against Keir Starmer's policies to every single constituency branch and every single meeting at every single conference. Well, I'm joined now by the former Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Why do you think this has happened? I think that we weren't strong enough in opposing the government on COVID, weren't strong enough in opposing their awful dealings with Serco and other companies and handing out contracts the way that they did. And uh, whilst John McDonnell proposed the furlough system last year, that was good. Uh, we need to also now demand that post-furlough there be proper support for people. Otherwise, we're going to see a terrible loss of jobs later this year and already seeing growing levels of poverty and inequality in Britain. Labour's opposition to the government's COVID strategy simply hasn't got through and isn't understood on the doorstep. But if, if we listen to the people who've been untangling this... This bad week, let's call it that for Labour. One yeah. of the voices, Peter Mandelson, Lord Mandelson, mentions your name. Let's just have a listen. I mean, actually, the reasons for the defeat, if I really had to boil them down to, uh, to two things, I would say they were two Cs, Covid and Corbyn. So it's your fault. Well, Mandelson is completely wrong on all of that. Two things. We lost 300 council seats last week. The worst result under me was a loss of 18, which was awful and regrettable, but it was nothing like that order. Secondly, Peter Mandelson said in terms that he woke up every morning to do something to undermine the elected leadership of the Labour Party i.e. me and others. So we don't need lectures from Peter Mandelson on that. What we need is a period of uh, contrition by Peter Mandelson for his behaviour in the past. But I don't want to put this thing all into personality. It's not about that. It's about the policies that we, we follow um, in, the, in the future and the policies that were put forward in the 2019 election, uh, all of which were individually popular, many of which have since been adopted by the government. And whilst I was convinced condemned for wanting to invest very large sums of money in regional and national investment banks to improve infrastructure and job opportunities all over the country. That was uh, condemned by the Tories at the time, and then a month, six weeks later, yeah. Boris Johnson was actually adopting those policies, <laughs> including <laughs> free broadband, right. which was condemned as, I think the words were, a deaf touch of language, broadband communism. I'm still grasping Marxism. with yeah. what that actually is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but of course, it, things changed and the pandemic changed everything and people stealing yeah. other people's policies is is nothing new in politics it happens all the time well, and, it's actually and, quite complimentary when people steal your policies well yeah but but despite that set of policies which you say are winning policies you had a very bad general election jeremy and you lost you know you gave boris johnson an 80 seat majority so surely that's not the way for labor to go now, the general election result was awful obviously i know that as much as anybody else i fought that campaign and i obviously saw the results we got 10 million plus votes which um, in any other election up back as far as 2001 would have given a majority indeed it was more votes than we got in all the other elections but on a first past the post system things work out in an odd way and we ended up losing seats even though we got those votes now i'm obviously very sad about that i obviously recognize there are huge issues that have to be addressed and the party by uh, turning in on itself on policies when the policies individually were all seen to be on all opinion polling quite popular the monstering of individuals in the party john mcdonald diane abbott myself and others had an effect on the electorate. So it is about reaching out in communities. It is about the function of the party at a local level. And under my leadership, we had 600,000 members and I was developing that community base of the party because I think that is actually where it has to be for the future. Because listen, COVID has brought out 
the best and the worst in our society. The worst has been the greed and the grasping of some of the companies to grab contracts. The best has been the mutual aid groups all over the country where people from all walks of life come together to support each other, going through mental health crises, food shortages, and so on. And so it has actually created a very different sense of community, which I think in the long run, might see a rather different, rather more caring society in this country. But, but yeah, sure, but there isn't much of a sense of community inside the Labour Party where your, your close friend John McDonnell, who was your shadow chancellor, says he's going to fight Keir Starmer's policies at every meeting, in every conference. Now, that's just only the mirror image of the remark you were criticising Beetle Mandelson for. Well, John feels very strongly about the policies that he advocates. And remember, when John became shadow chancellor in 2015, he turned on its head the argument that you had to have austerity in order to grow, you had to cut in order to grow, you had to uh, freeze wages and, uh, and damage living standards. He turned that debate on its head, and so that it became a discussion about the levels of investment that both parties would put in the future. And I I credit John with changing that level of political debate, and he feels very passionately that uh, an inclusive economy has to be one that invest in all parts of the country in all communities of the future and doesn't seek to divide. Because, listen, if you're poor on minimum wage or on short-term contracts and relying on tax credits to get by in Hartlepool or London, you're in the same situation. You might have voted differently on the Brexit referendum, but that's different. It's actually a sense of unity of peoples that we want to develop, and that certainly is what um, we tried to do, and I would continue okay. to do. And I would caution very carefully about going back to free market economics, austerity, and freezing of well, wages. That Clearly the choice. If, if this Keir Starmer is in the middle of, of Labour and that doesn't work because it's too woolly, you either go left for Corbyn, forgive me for shortening your name there, or you go right to Blair, right? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to annoy you by playing one more clip from Peter Mandelson, Jeremy oh, Corbyn. Okay. No, no, it won't annoy me. I'll enjoy it. All right, so he's, he's it on, it listen on. carefully. He's talking about the last 11 elections. You know, the last 11 general elections read lose, 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 Blair, 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 lose, 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 lose. And that is, in the end, that talks louder than anything, doesn't it? Well, we won in 1997, and we had uh, policies that brought in the minimum wage and sure start and improved health facilities and education, all of which I supported, and, of course, the peace process in Northern Ireland. Sadly, there were two very wrong directions taken. One was the marketisation of public services in local government and health, and the other was the absolute disaster of the Iraq war and uh, what went with that, and, of course, um, university tuition fees. And so I think that um, uh, Peter Mandelson should reflect a bit more on the wrong direction the government took after 2001. Okay. And uh, we, whilst we did win the 2005 <coughs> election, that was on rather less votes than we achieved when we lost in the 2019 election. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Jeremy Corbyn, MP. Former, and by the way, Jeremy, not, not currently with the Labour Party in Parliament, or have you got it back, the whip back? Well, or what? Uh, I am a member of the Labour Party, have been for the last 55 years, and um, I have not yet been restored the whip. I hope that is on its way, because uh, I think what we need in Parliament is a really serious, strong opposition that holds this government to account and also holds this government to account on its um, phony environmental message because uh, COP26 is a great opportunity for us to lead the way right. Thank you, on Jeremy. a sustainable planet. Thank you very much, Jeremy. You take care. Thank you, Jeremy Corbyn, MP, former Labour leader. A long-standing member of the Labour Party, and you, know, you love its roots, you like its values, and you look at previous governments, you see what they've achieved for our, you know, for our country. Why, why, do you just want to, why do you want to sort of walk away and just pass the title deeds of this great party mm -hmm. over to somebody like Jeremy Corbyn? Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I, I resent it. Uh, and I work every single day in some small way to bring forward his, the end of his tenure in office. And what, every day. 
something, however small it may be, an email, or a phone call, or a meeting I convene, or people I see, or labor MPs I encourage, or young people I sort of take out and try and, you know, galvanize them. Every day I try to do something uh, to rescue the Labour Party from his leadership.